So my first <laughs> question to you, <laughs> we just entered 2023. We just entered February. So first and foremost, how are you doing in this year? I'm doing really good. I feel really good. I feel really blessed going into this year, honestly. I feel like this previous month, my church had went on a fast. So we were fasting. And I think that it was super important to, you know, like starve the flesh the very first of the first. Mm -hmm. And so I think that it was something that was super important and well needed for me to have a lot of discipline and be in focus going into this year. So I'm really feeling abundant. I'm feeling really calm in my spirit. And I'm feeling blessed overall like I just feel good this year <laughs> absolutely those fasts they, they definitely be doing so I mean I, I went on two last year so yeah definitely definitely excited for you crazy I think I only went on like one last year I was a wuss but <laughs> <laughs> I mean because sometimes you don't necessarily have to do like food like you can just do like tv social media things like that so yeah i do want to try something like that though maybe this year next so mm -hmm. what are some goals that you have with your music for this new year some goals that i definitely have for music this year is definitely collaborating with three artists um definitely a female a male and maybe a producer Okay. Um, and outside of that I really really want to secure uh, maybe like three placements this year okay. I love writing so I really want to get more into my writing bag and um, really just connecting more I feel like with women female artists this year in Atlanta I really 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 kind of want to be on the scene a little bit more so that I can kind of connect and network with some of them and really just become friends with some of them absolutely I you good like who do we have maybe the female artist, the male artist? Um, so I'm currently in Atlanta right now. So I feel like female artists, I feel like here in Atlanta that I would really enjoy working with is definitely Summer or Mariah. I do like both of them. Um, and I feel like if it was a male artist, I really don't know if I know too many male artists that are in Atlanta that are on like the R&B tip that I know personally. Um, but I feel like that is a little bit more of a, I'm kind of open to that. It can, it could really just be anybody, but it's a couple of people that I do like. I like Sir, I like um, Daniel Caesar, Britt. It's a whole bunch of people out here. <laughs> Atlanta is packed. So yeah, definitely, definitely hoping that you get all those features though. So. Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean. <laughs> of course. <laughs> So starting from like your beginning, your root, how did you first get into music? How did you find your voice? How did that go? I feel like I've always really been into music. I kind of brought music to my parents. Uh, they kind of always knew that I would always go around humming and like doing yeah. little hymns and stuff. Um, and then I kind of finally brought it to them and they had got me vocal training and I probably have really began taking music seriously um, when I was about 11 or 12. Um, and that's when we really like went full throttle with vocal coaches, directors, like taking choir, taking lessons, all types of, this, of stuff. And um, I think it was really, really cool. So that's pretty, that's pretty much like when I actually got into music and I actually started to become classically trained and, you know, study music theory and stuff like that pertaining to music. So... <laughs> Wow. So how would you say your sound and your voice has changed over that time? I feel like, honestly, my sound, even from just last year alone, has mm -hmm. completely changed as of today's day. <laughs> and I think that that's so crazy to say, but I feel like I'm always in a different place in my life. And I feel like I'm more so inspired by the things around me that I surround myself with, the people I surround myself with, the company. Mm -hmm. um, landscape um sceneries like I just got back from Africa for my birthday new year oh, so yes. you know like everything is just always inspiring me and I try to take that time to really be inspired by the things around me mm -hmm. and so for my sound I feel like it's forever growing <laughs> it's forever growing <laughs> absolutely so you had mentioned like music is your main focus right now 
Um, so how are you learning and working to reinvent yourself as an artist and present yourself, you know? I think that I have been working a lot on the back of burner side of things. Um, like last year, I really spent a lot of time last year. Like I really wanted to not only just know the music musicality side of things because that's easy you know that I can do that in my sleep I can create in my sleep I can work with people in my sleep and literally just get the job done um but I feel like for me last year one of the biggest things that really helped me reinvent myself was investing in my own studio okay um, learning how to record and produce myself self-producing myself um, and really just learning the business aspect of things, getting a LLC, um, you know, launching a production company and really just learning about splits and contracts and just really just sharpening my knowledge on stuff like that. So I feel like that has really helped me and it's going to help me a lot, especially with 2023 and going into 2023 really, really prepared. Um, and so I think those are a of really good steps that helped me reinvent myself for this year in the direction that I want to take. Wow. It definitely sounds like you're like busy, like all around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> definitely that. Definitely that. <laughs> so what would you say some challenges, if any, that you're facing with this establishing yourself and reinventing yourself? I think that the biggest obstacle or challenge right now is really just still being able to enjoy myself but really just not being like a perfectionist like I feel like I'm such a perfectionist as a Capricorn woman like we are just and I feel like this is what any woman it doesn't even matter what sign you are I feel like any woman that genuinely has a craft or something that they admire they love and admire they're going to be a perfectionist about it and sometimes for me it's very very hard for me to realize that this is not always work but this is also you know something that you do love and it is an outlet and it's something that you utilize to help others and connect with others and so I really just sometimes now when I go to record I kind of try to you know I like sage I'll be having my candles and stuff because I really got to bring myself back down to earth and just take this moment to enjoy this creativity absolutely I definitely <laughs> love that so <laughs> the sage and bringing yourself back to reality that's how you would that's how you would say like you would overcome the perfectionist and things like that Yes, I'll be having to tell myself like girl just breathe like <laughs> you to go in here and yell on a track we're going to do it, but we're going to have fun doing it, you know? <laughs> so that's kind of like, I I just bring myself back down. I take a moment. I, you know, bless my session. I bless the people that are in the session. And I kind of pray over the session, whatever it is that's created, whether I choose to release it or not. You know, like I give that time to God to just use me as a vessel. So I love that. Oh my gosh. Yes. I think I have to be more mindful of going into this year. So <laughs> Definitely have to, especially with everything that's going on these days. Definitely. So yeah. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. So what would you say the typical day for you looks like? Especially with all that you said that you have. How what was what's the typical day for you? Yeah, so this year I feel like the typical day for me is really getting up. I'll usually pray and meditate or I'll go to a Pilates class or yoga or a workout. And then from there I will have my meetings. I'll check my email, anything that I have to go over with any type of management, um, my publicist, that's usually around that time. And then I'll usually have lunch. Um, and from there, I will spend now I'm spending my evenings recording, um, if not recording, then I am studying because I do want to go back to college. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I've been kind of just brushing up on stuff. But yeah, if I'm not um, in the studio come nighttime, I'm usually actually just studying like musicality side of things, whether that's self recording, um, or bettering like uh, adding verb to a session or Plugging, adding a plug in or something pertaining to music, the aspect side of things, whether I'm just watching a Sade interview, it don't even matter what it mm -hmm. is. I, <laughs> I divide time for that. And I also divide time for um, like actual school because I do want to 
get a little degree. <laughs> of course. What schools are you looking at and what would your major be? So I'm in Atlanta, so I have been really looking at SCAD and I have been looking at a couple other colleges out here as well. And um, I had been looking into, I feel like I know everything about music. So I just felt like I wanted maybe a breath of fresh air. And um, so I think I really want to go to school for architecture and information systems only because I now have a production company. So I really want to be able to interior design and graphic design like an actual compound and how I want it to look and how I want it to be. Um, a couple things that I really want to launch and I really like information systems because it's basically just integrating tech with business and I like to think that I'm a businesswoman and I think there's a lot of business women that can benefit benefit from knowing how to you know integrate their businesses with tech so yeah I feel like everything goes hand in hand <laughs> Oh, girl, you are, I mean, on it. I mean, my goodness. Yeah, I spent a lot of time just focusing and really just being patient. Like, I know I feel like everyone has, like, their own lesson in life yearly. And I feel like last year, my lesson was just shutting up and just being patient. <laughs> and this year, I get to thrive. So I'm excited. <laughs> Yes. So talk about your production company. Like, what's the name of it? What motivated it? Like, talk about that. Yes. So my production company it is um, called Rocky Hill Road, and I did create it last year, and it does, it is for music, and I kind of want to branch out into three different places. One, being able to offer studio um sessions and you know having writing sessions and writing camps for women here in Atlanta something more so along the line of maybe something all women based just so that people can have a you know a creative space for women and outside of that um, definitely the production side so just really wanting to get more onto like short film side of things and I really just want to be able to launch a, like I said, I have a warehouse or have a compound or a place to work out of, a place that other artists can work out of and so forth. I do feel like that is going to be my biggest accomplishment most likely this year. But Rocky Hill Road, um, that was actually the address that I was born at in Virginia. Um, so I'm a country baby. <laughs> but yeah, Rocky Hill Road, that is the first address that I ever lived in in my entire life when I was living in Richmond, Virginia. So <laughs> I love that it has meaning about it because some people just be coming up with stuff and it's just like okay. Yeah, it gotta, it gotta come from some <laughs> facts, facts. So getting specifically into your music. Yes. <laughs> you just dropped your single Wait on Me in December and you just recently dropped the visuals to it. Yay. So talk about the process and the meaning behind the single. <laughs> so I feel like Wait On Me, I feel like every single song that I create is really like just so different. Um, but Wait On Me was pretty much about me being in a place in my life where I kind of felt like I wanted my cake and I wanted to eat it too. Um, <laughs> I feel like it's super ballsy. I feel like it's super confident. And I feel like any woman can kind of relate to that who's ever been in that position you know I feel like any woman right now that's maybe in their 20s you know it's a lot of people that want to settle down but it's like when you're a woman with dreams and you have drive and you have you know things that you really want to accomplish you know some things have to just wait and Girl. that's, <laughs> that's just... the mindset that I was in when I created that so <laughs> oh my goodness I mean you you hit it right on the tail <laughs> Because I'd be like, yes, I do want a relationship. And then it's like, oh, how can I fit that in? So, yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, we all want our cake and want to eat it too. But, you know, sometimes we have to compromise. And at that time in, the, in, that, in that time of my life, you, that, that was what I had to compromise. So, <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, with that, you drop singles, Wait On Me, Inside Me, Counts of an Angel. Mm -hmm. When can we expect the body of work? I mean, I believe Sounds of an Angel was supposed to be an EP. I did. I tried to look, look, look. I can't find nothing. So where is that? 
let me be the first to say that I am so, so, so sorry because <laughs> yes, 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 Sounds of an Angel was supposed to be a body of work, mm-hmm. but I'm an independent artist, which means that I changed my mind a lot. And um, I'm also still learning everything as I go. So it's a little different, <laughs> but I am taking initiative to apologize because yes, that was supposed to be a body of work and I just never dropped it because when I created Wait On Me, it was just really like a different direction that I felt like I was going into. And um, so I do want to really drop a body of work this year. I am planning to drop a body of work between um, spring and summertime. And I really will most likely have about five tracks on it and one bonus track. So okay. we will yeah. definitely be on the lookout because we've been waiting. <laughs> It's done. It's it's literally done. So it's there. It's signed, still delivered. <laughs> just oh. really just confirming everything, getting like the last final mixes, mastering done, stuff like that, cover art, so forth. So <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Well, I'll definitely be looking. Yes. Spring summer. Spring summer. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, so You've also dropped a couple of freestyles a while back, like one to Oprah's bank account, another one to Chef G and Sleepy Hollow's Close Part 2. So can we expect more freestyles on this EP? Can we expect some rapping? Like, what's... I don't know. Do girls want rap? Girls love the rap. I don't know, because that's why I never even released rap, because I was like, girls don't even be wanting to rap. So... I didn't know if girls if the girls want to rap, but if the girls want rap, we can give them rap. We we got a whole vault full of raps now. Okay, like, I do believe that you're sitting on a whole lot of content. I do firmly believe that. <laughs> yeah, so we we can easily drop some raps, but yeah, actually, I think it's actually pretty funny that you say that because I think I want the bonus track to either be a live version of one of the songs off the EP, like an unplugged version, mm-hmm. or I do want it to be a rap. So it's going to come down to those two. Um, but I, I, that's why I said spring, summer, because top of summer, baby, I want that thing jumping. <laughs> that's exactly what we hoping for, so... Yeah, that's what I'm like. I think I got a good little wrap in my pocket just tucked away to drop for y'all. So <laughs> I'm definitely I'm looking for that. So you say you moved you just moved to Atlanta or you're located in Atlanta right now. Um mm-hmm. and in a recent QA that you posted on Instagram, you talked about Atlanta and its impact on music as a whole. So how yes. would you say Atlanta has impacted your music personally? in your sound? I think that Atlanta has really inspired me to be a little bit more authentic with my music and really just showing my personality through my music. I feel like I've grown so much, even just with my sound and the direction that I want to take. And the people that I work with here, they inspire me so much and they push me to like different parts of me that I never even knew existed and just being able to create and expand in my mind and my creativity. Um, And I think that when you're an artist, you, it's always good to be around like-minded people and people that also want to push you and inspire you. So I do feel like ultimately Atlanta has brought me a lot of authenticity and really just being comfortable talking about literally any and everything on a record and just at least getting it out of my system and knowing that I can create something of that element and um, I can continue to, so that I can just continue to push myself. And I think that's really what I've, I've taken from being in Atlanta. And I really am so happy to know this new chapter of my music and myself and just as a woman, like, I'm loving it. <laughs> and I'm loving it for you. I mean, girl, you are just shouting, yes. <laughs> Thank you. This I might be shining just because my dermatologist, my dermatologist, shout out to Skin Farm in Atlanta. They really be hooking me up. <laughs> Flourishing on both outside and inside. So I definitely love that. <laughs> and with you being in Atlanta, um, what would you say your favorite moment is? <sighs> what is my favorite moment? And like, as you're building your career in, in Atlanta. 
Hmm. Okay, so I think that my favorite memory so far um, since I've been releasing music uh, would definitely be my Huffington Post release that I did. And it was actually here in Atlanta. And it's crazy because it rained that day. Oh. And we literally had like five looks that we were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we only got to do one look outside and it rained and everything else had to be done indoors and I just felt like that was a very pivotal moment for me mm -hmm. like okay. because I've always loved Huffington Post I also feel like Forbes was one of those moments where it was just very pivotal for me like I just couldn't believe it mm -hmm. but actually being in Atlanta would definitely be Huffington Post because I've always just really liked them and the people that I worked with like they were all just amazing. Like from the photographer, shout out to Sydney, shout out to MJ, shout out to, you know, all the, the stylist assistants, everybody that put forth into making this, you know, come to life. It was so fun. And I still actually have relations with all the people that I work with that day. So I try to always stay in contact with people and really, especially if I love their energy and, you know, what they stand for and so forth, mm -hmm. then I definitely following you. <laughs> yeah. <Listen. Yeah>. Follow. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think that was really one of the biggest um, things for me. And I really want to do GQ. I feel like that's mm -hmm. like an ultimate, ultimate, but we'll right. get there. <laughs> But while we're on the topic of looks, mm -hmm. I love your looks, first and foremost. You give Thanks. a lot, like a variety of looks. So how would you describe your look or would you just not put it in like a box? Because I feel like I wouldn't describe my look because I feel like my look is very much like Rihanna's. It's kind of like based off of my style, how I'm feeling my mood. Like I just kind of go with the flow of things. And I really feel like I haven't even had the chance to really pop out how I'm gonna pop out. So really? yeah, this is just really some very much casual, if you see me, you see me type vibes mm -hmm. because I really feel like I'm in a part of my life where I'm really grinding. Mm -hmm. And I really don't wanna, like I'd rather the work speak for me than to really just be out here, you know, being very frivolous and nothing's wrong with that, but I'm okay with waiting. <laughs> yeah. But I do feel like my style is definitely based off of my personality, how I'm feeling. I'm always gonna make it stylish, whether it's sweats, whether it's something sexy, whether it's some mesh. Look, we gonna, we gonna make it do what it do. We gonna reinvent it. step in your way, yes. Right. <laughs> Definitely love that. So my last couple of questions to you. Mm -hmm. On your social media, you describe yourself as Asriel most wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Explain what you mean by that. <laughs> yeah, so I do go by most wanted because honestly, I feel like always growing up, like my friends, my childhood friends, they will always be like, you're so poised, you're so charismatic, you're so charming, you're so, so many things. I was just always so many things. So I just always just was like, you know what, I'm just go by most wanted. And honestly, it's really not for me to spoil the illusion. I really kind of just let it be one of those things where it's really in the eye of the beholder. So um, that's really why I go by most wanted, but I do think that it's probably because I'm, you know, abundant in everything that I do and I'm organic and I'm wholesome with everything that I do. So that's yeah. usually what it is. Yeah. <laughs> that's usually exactly what it is. They just ignore them and do exactly what you keep doing. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. So when people see or hear the name Azriel, what is the main thing that you want people to take away? I, the main thing that I want people to take away when they hear my name is to feel like they can relate to me and to feel like they can see me in them and they can also see my growth in them. And I feel like that is one of the biggest, biggest, biggest things that I would want anyone to take away from here in Asriel. I want them to look at me and be like, wow, like... I love that girl so much or I can relate to that girl so much or I feel like I'm growing with that girl like I just want to 
grow with her like you know so I feel like that is really where I'm at when people say Asriel Mm -hmm. and I have to really get comfortable hearing my name because I used to hate hearing my name and I feel like I don't know I just always I never liked it like I just I never liked it I thought that it was just a cast a cloud over my head (laughs) (laughs) no literally and it's so funny because like I was just I was you know speaking with a pastor and they were talking about like the meaning of names and so forth and we had stumbled across my name and he really changed my perspective on my name and the meaning of it and the meaning of it was you know that God is my help and so anytime anyone says Asriel now like I just it's a it's a men it's a mental reset like Mm -hmm. I literally just be like so calm down in my spirit like I just be very happy when people say my name now because I know that it has meaning behind it and I think that's a beautiful thing so (laughs) absolutely I mean when you come to God if God be for you who can be against you girl I mean amen Amen. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) so my last question to you is there anything that you would want your fans to be on the lookout for you would want them to know I definitely do want them to be on the lookout for this EP I'm gonna be dropping a wait on me behind the scenes vlog which I felt was something that was super super different because I wanted to kind of let people see a little bit into the people that I work with and the people that I'm here connecting with in Atlanta and how it kind of came into fruition and so forth so definitely that wait on me vlog is gonna be dropping on YouTube scoop of Azriel and the project dropping most likely more on the summer side but spring summer it will be the end of spring going into summer guys and um I think I'm also going to be doing a really big giveaway for this EP release for my followers my listeners my audience my fan base I love you guys so much so this giveaway is going to pertain to me and things that I like You know, I'm big on skincare. I'm big on fashion. You know, I like to travel. Wink, wink, wink. But I do have a super, super big surprise for a few lucky, lucky um, listeners. So I'm really excited for that. (laughs) Definitely. And as they should be too. So, yes. 